Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. You know, it all sounds so easy, the way Mark lays it out here at the beginning of the gospel with this call. The time is now. Repent and believe. But repenting and believing, turning lives around and trusting in Jesus, that's not always such an easy thing to do for us. It's hard. And, uh, you know, life can just be murky and mucky and tough. And it's hard for us to put our trust in Jesus, even really know what that is supposed to mean for us. But maybe there's something to this kind of living in between. Maybe there's something to this season of Lent. Maybe that's why we've got this whole 40 days here to kind of try to wrestle with and figure out uh, what God's way for us really looks like in our lives. Well, so without further ado, welcome, welcome to Lent, everybody. Here we are. You know, as we look ahead to these the rest of these 40 days in this season, each week, as I was telling the kids, each week is going to focus on a different story, uh, specifically now covenants of the people from the Hebrew scriptures. We heard about Noah and the uh, rainbow and God's promise uh, after the flood to never wipe out the world again with a flood. And the thing is, as we continue to read these covenants throughout Lent, throughout all of them, they, they're about God making a way for people that ends in life. It doesn't end in their corporate death, but it ends in a new way, a new, a new beginning. And each week as we'll read another one of these and each gospel reading will connect to that promise, that covenant, they all point us towards the cross as we move towards Holy Week, Good Friday, and eventually Easter. But as we continue with these scriptures, I, I hope that we will get this understanding more and more as a community that God's way for us is always this way of life, always, even as we experience so much death and dying in the world around us. This is what we've come to call is the cycle of death and resurrection. It's one of the centerpieces of Christian theology. But if we look back at Noah, and that time of his and the flood and everything, if we look back at that with this lens of death and resurrection and God's way of new life for the world, I think that the Noah story is less about God wiping the world out and more about the hopefulness of God saving what can be saved in the midst of loss. And as for hundreds of years, the Jewish people told this story of the saving waters of the flood. It wasn't until the first century in the common era when the Christian community picked up that language and began to look at it in a different way as they saw Jesus came to the river Jordan to be baptized and somehow water then was being made holy by God in a new way. And so then they said, well, maybe as we come to baptism, this is the new saving water of God that washes over us in our baptism. And, and it's a new beginning for us. And so all of a sudden there were these parallels and stories became put on top of stories as various layers of meaning were added. And now as these followers of Jesus in the first century were hearing these words in a new way, they were realizing that this way of Jesus was completely different than what they'd experienced before. 
I mean, even after he was hoisted high on the cross and killed and executed, putting on display our human penchant for violence and terrorism, God said, no, that's not, that's not the final word. There's more to it than that. And then through Easter resurrection, the disciples, the followers of Jesus began to reframe their thinking. But now as we look at Mark's gospel for today and Jesus starting out his ministry with these 40 days in the wilderness, echoing the 40 days of the flood and the 40 years of the Israelites wandering in the desert between Egypt and the promised land, I'm, I'm wondering what these 40 days will hold for us. What kind of new life might be emerging out of this season here in this place, where the Spirit might be leading us? Did you notice in Mark's gospel that it was, it was the Spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness? I hadn't really noticed that before. I don't know if that's just Mark's gospel or if it's there in all of them, but it's the Spirit, that same Spirit that had just descended upon Jesus like a dove at the river as the heavens were torn open and God was somehow present in this time. It's that same Spirit then that pushes Jesus, drives him immediately out into the wilderness as Jesus then embraces a season of challenge, but change and maybe a new beginning too. The thing is, even with that dove, I mean, for Jesus beginning his ministry, the the early hearers of Mark's gospel would have said, hold on, the, the dove of peace descending on Jesus, that's a subversive image. Because in Rome, in the legions, the the military units would hold the war bird, the eagle at the front of the legion, representing Caesar's power and Rome's power and everything that the empire stood for, including crushing all those other nations in the region. So this was kind of a protest symbol, the dove on Jesus emerging from waters of new life. There's all sorts of things that were happening here. And I'm wondering then, as Jesus goes out into the wilderness, he's tempted, all of this is at stake, and everything that's evil in the world is trying to rob Jesus of his ministry, Jesus makes it through the 40 days. He makes it through, just like Noah made it through the flood and the Israelites made it to the promised land eventually. There's a new beginning a new way of living then. And you know, down at the tap house on Monday nights with pub theology, um, one of the things we've been talking a lot about lately is what does it mean to live as the community then of, of God, of Christ, of, of new life? Uh, this is a common theme, but I think m- more recently we've been it's come up a little more. I'm seeing a couple of you who I know are down there regularly. You can, you know, catch me on this. But... Um, As we're down there at the pub on Monday nights, talking about what it means to live as the body of Christ around that table, sharing conversation that feels a lot like church sometimes. I mean, we're not singing hymns there. Brock hasn't come down with his accordion yet and pulled out some of those old Lutheran hymns that Martin Luther turned from drinking songs into church songs, and maybe we could bring those full circle again, but... There's a sense there around the table of mutuality and working together and listening and trying to be, trying to understand one another and and be challenged too. I mean, the full spectrum um, of thoughts, you know, come around our table. And, but the thing is at the end of the 90 minutes that we spend together, we always bring it back together. And there's always a way to think of how are we then continuing to serve one another and, and love each other in our world? And really, that's what this space is about, too. I mean, we don't have 50 beers on tap, but uh, this space is about community. And hopefully, we're enacting that same kind of sense of mutuality, gathering around a table and remembering God's call to feed each other in the world, which is what this liturgy that we participate in together is supposed to facilitate, even if it doesn't all the time. But this is that space where we hear God's good news for us and we respond then with giving and and feasting and sharing, whether that's at the table at the tap house or here. It's the same kind of thing. 
That's why we take seriously everything that happens in this space, how the the prayers echo the scriptures for the day, as do the, the hymns and everything else that we engage in dynamically together as we share these stories from scripture that continue to form us and our community. And as is the case with God's historic covenants with the people throughout time, this space seeks always to be a life-giving space for our community. I know we don't always hit that mark, but that's what we're aiming for. So I'm wondering now, what what is Lent going to look like for you, for us? How will Lent be life-giving this year? So since we're on the topic of pub theology, I want to do a little pub theology in the sanctuary here. I want you to look around, find someone around you, someone sitting in front of you, behind you, to the left or right of you, could be your family, could be your friend, could be someone you don't know, introduce yourself. Um, But I want you to turn around, find someone, find a group, four, five, six people maybe, and ask each other, how is this Lent, 2015, right now, how is this gonna be life-giving for you for your loved ones, for this community, what is that going to look like? Is it going to look like some studying of scripture here on Wednesday nights or Sunday mornings? Is it going to look like some practice at home, some special meal you're going to have? Or is it going to look like just sitting down and maybe reading a scripture story together? Or poetry, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to read poetry during Lent. I haven't really started yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> but yeah, so is three minutes enough time, do you think? Three, four minutes, something like that? All right, I'll regather us in a few minutes with Turn to your neighbors. I'm going to come over to you.
Jack Moore, come down to the pub on Monday night. Tap House, 5.30, the table's open. There's plenty of space for everyone. Um, did you hear some good things? I was challenged in some new ways to think differently. This was, this was good. And this is Lent. I mean, this is not only Lent, though. This is life beyond Lent. This is Easter living. This is the life we live throughout the year. God's life coming to us in all seasons. And, you know, I started out uh, this morning talking about how this gospel of Mark, yeah, it's hard to repent, right? it's hard to turn around, it's hard to believe and trust and whatever that means. Um, but maybe, it, maybe it's more about just coming and, and following that invitation. And Jesus says, come, be a part of what God is doing in the world. This is what God is always doing and yet God is always making things new. And so as we come, I hope that this season will continue to be life-giving for you and for our community. So if you would, please, let's say a prayer together. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Lord, we give you thanks for carrying us through every season of life. We give you thanks for your saving waters. And we give you thanks for the new life you grant us always. Be with us now in this time in these 40 days of Lent and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen.